to stand. Are you glad today that Christ has come? Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Let's lift our hands and thank him and let's celebrate his presence today. Lord, touch our hearts today. Lord, uh, we pray, Lord, that you would uh, clear our minds. Lord, as we put our eyes and our attention toward you, that you would be the focus of our attention today. We thank you for your presence and your goodness in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Say hello, good morning to someone, maybe two or three this morning.
enough for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There we go. They didn't want to obey me this morning. sing this then. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross we
the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand we just lift our hands and worship your name we speak the name of Jesus we honor the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah
Oh, we praise that name above every other name. Yeah, the earth will shake. your time, give him the time that he deserves. Hallelujah. This day is about him. Hallelujah. We worship you. John said, Lord, that he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he beheld you in your glory. We want to behold you today. Not as some far off distant force, but as God that has come to earth. Sing this little chorus with me. Amen. Emmanuel, his name is called. He is here, you can touch him. Oh, he is here, you can touch 
Jesus. If you believe that, then go ahead. He is here. magnify the name of Jesus once again. He is worthy of it all. Sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Just something special about this time of year. Just the sweetness, the innocence, something about the presence of the Lord as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, my Savior, your Savior, everyone you know, He is the Savior of the world. Amen. Amen. Let's give Him one more hand clap. He's worthy of it all. Worthy of it all. Amen. 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 You can be seated today. Our kids can go on out. A lot happening out there for them. It's a good time to be a kid. I think that uh, this time of year brings out the kid in everybody, right? And uh, we all uh, have memories of our childhood, but we're making new memories today. Every day is a new day. And we want to say welcome to you. We are glad that you are here with us at Celebration Church. And it's so good to be here in the presence of the Lord to be with our brothers and sisters in the Lord here, and uh, we just love you all, and we're expecting God to do a great, great thing today. Pastor, we're looking forward to the word, awesome worship, every song picked out. Uh, I don't know how many of you have seen this going around, but I've been doing this for several years now, uh, but for the month of December, if you've not started it, you can still do it that there are, in the book of Luke, 24 chapters. Well, if you will take the first 24 days of December and read one chapter a day out of the book of Luke, it will take you right up to Christmas Eve. And then when I wake up on Christmas Day, I'm really excited because I've just done a 24-day read, every chapter, on why he came, who he was, and when he's coming back, it's exciting. I was reading this morning chapter 4 of Luke. And it's when Jesus stood up in the temple and he started declaring who he was and what he had come to do. And the one thing, and I loved it when Pastor did the song, and he came to set the captives free. And I just got so excited imagining everybody. And in that same chapter, talking about those that needed a healing talking about those that uh, were possessed by demons. I mean, it was just amazing that every, we say from the worst to the least or whatever it is, but every single person Jesus came to set whoever so ever would call on his name was going to be saved and set free. And uh, my translation said, and every chain will be broken. And I was just excited this morning. Get at the word. This is really, during this season, you will get overloaded on the other side and it will drain from you when you're only doing the outward works. But when you get inside you the living word of God, and uh, it's just amazing uh, what God can do. So I love this time of year. It, uh, you know, I always tell pastor, I say, you know I love Christmas, right? And it's not just all the food and the smells and the senses. I said, because I love Christ, you know. And uh, that's why we should celebrate. We love Christmas because we love Jesus. And that's why we do what we do and celebrate. And we just want to do it in an overloaded, big way, every single thing that we do. And uh, that's what we have some things planned for you a week from today. Uh, we have some special guest speakers that are going to be here. They are no strangers to a lot of you, but that is going to be Bard and Lori Height. And a lot of you, hey, you know what? I need to record that and send that to Bart and Lori. They would love that. We know you all love them very much. They 
they uh, were here 12 years working right alongside Pastor and I working in the youth and the music. They had their hand in almost everything amazing. And uh, we've seen them go on and be pastors in other churches, and God used them the last 12 years. So you put 12 and 12. It's been 24 years ago. God brought them really into our lives. And uh, 12 years ago, as we released them and saw them go and do more, well, they're kind of in a transition again. And uh, they've been going out and speaking at different churches around all over California. And we thought, you know what? They ought to come back home and do a service for us next Sunday. So uh, we know they're going to be speaking. We've mentioned to them we would love to hear them sing and do a little music. But uh, that's still iffy. But I think just being together. And of all days, next Sunday is also going to be our church Christmas banquet lunch. So it's great that God's bringing all the family back. Those that are new to the family, those of us that have been around a while, next Sunday, immediately following the service, we're having catered in <clears throat> one of Pastor's favorite foods, barbecue. <laughs> and uh, from one of his favorite places, and that's Brooklyn's Barbecue. They have been just so wonderful, uh, especially the last three years. Uh, for most of our events, we've catered in when so many others wouldn't. Them and Maui both were one of the few that would. And uh, so they are uh, going to be catering in. We have chicken and tri-tip. They're wonderful beans. I'm not a macaroni and cheese person at all, zero. But I will eat it from there. It is very, very good. And uh, we have that, a nice salad. We have bread. And then we had one of our amazing ladies, she always does so good, but Joanne Royce came to me last Sunday and said, what are your ideas for the desserts for next Sunday's lunch? I said, well, I was just going to call and order some in. She said, don't do it. She said, I want to hand make everything and have homemade desserts. And uh, isn't that, let's give her a hand. Yes, we're going to be having homemade desserts. I thought it was going to be like snickerdoodle cookies and all. She informed me yesterday at our ladies' lunch. She's going to be doing some chocolate pies, some lemon pies. Uh, and if you're really close with her, maybe you could text her and tell her what some of your favorites are. But those three I just said, snickerdoodles, chocolate pie, and anything lemon, are mine and Mark's favorite. So I'm good with anything else. I do like pecan or pumpkin, but... Those three, I will be a happy girl. You know, my mom taught me. I watched her uh, growing up. She never let me cook in her kitchen. I got to watch and observe and learn. I was the student. She was the teacher. And I would watch her. And mom's theory was always make sure you have a good dessert, something sweet afterward, just in case the dinner does not turn out. And uh, so we're, I always like to have a really good dessert. And thank you, Joanne. So it's wonderful. This is a free lunch. We do this annually for our church, your family, your friends. Uh, no charge. All we need you to do is make sure you sign up as you uh, leave today's service. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the back board there. And make sure a realistic number because we'll be sending in a final count this next week letting them know because usually by Friday or Saturday, whatever number I give them, they charge us for that, which that's okay. We know things happen, but make sure you put up their realistic number and uh, we'll be taking that probably right up through Friday. So if you need to call in the church and change numbers or add to, uh, you could probably do that by Friday, I'm thinking. And even if people show up on Sunday, I usually go ahead and order several more extra dinners. And honestly, they, they throw in like 20 extra meals for us. So it, it's just so much food. If you've ever had it when Brooklyn caters for us, it's amazing. Wonderful place, too. I always like to give a shout out to those locals that have really blessed our church, especially the last two or three years. And they are one of those restaurants that's been amazing. So that is going to be next Sunday. Uh, we are going to have Christmas. Oh, I don't want to miss this. Our joy lunch, potluck lunch is coming up on December the 15th in our fellowship hall. We're going to be doing a cookie and candy gift exchange. And again, if anybody would like to do anything that involves pumpkin or lemons, uh, those are fantastic. I've never ate them together. I just thought of that. But who knows? It could be something new. Uh, the Brookdale on the 18th, they are going to be doing their senior living. And uh, they'll be doing their services that day. A lot of you have been asking about Christmas Sunday. 
we are going to be, ha- I'm not, I started to say that like I'm very sad and depressed. We are going to be having service that day. No, we are going to have service that day and we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Is that okay? Is that okay if the church does that? Uh, I stayed up last night and I was putting the event on the church's uh, Facebook page and it was so cool. I thought, you know, when I put this up, Mark and I, when we pray about things and we always say, well, if no one shows up, me and you are going to come and and Jesus. So, you know, that'll be good. So I was putting it up and man, within like 30 minutes, I had people leaving comments. We'll be there. We'll be there. And some even texting me that they said their church is closed that day, but they can they come and fellowship and partake with communion with us that day. I go, absolutely. You know, that's what it's about, that we want to do this for our community. And it's not that one is greater or less, you know, we're all working together. But this is one thing that Mark and I wanted to do for the church in our community. And that will be communion together. We won't be having kids class that day. We want all of our teachers and everybody to be able to come in and take communion together. Does that sound good? I I think it's going to be fantastic. I look forward to it. And uh, is everybody getting in the, the kind of the ramped up? Uh, gear for Christmas. Who has, who has bought all their Christmas gifts? You have that all done. Oh my goodness. One. Okay, so we're like 99% of you have not. <laughs> 99.9% have not. And I actually have two. I actually have yours already bought. It was already ordered on Amazon and I've got it tucked away and you have no idea what it is. You will love it though. And uh, it's just one of those that came to me. Don't you like those moments where you go, ah, he'd love that. And uh, so I'll let you know maybe after Christmas what it was. But, uh, yeah, I have that done and a few other things. Uh, We usually eat turkey on Thanksgiving. Our family, surprisingly, we're not big turkey eaters. But we do it. It's the traditional thing to do. On Did you all do that, too, on Thanksgiving? Do the turkey meal? Well, for Christmas, we normally do prime rib. And uh, we're not doing that this year because I went to my grocery store like two days after Thanksgiving and the butcher said, hey, you know all those turkeys I had over there? He said, we ordered way too many. Yesterday I knocked them down, 10 bucks a piece. He goes, today I'm getting ready to put them out there for five bucks a piece, all of them. And so I went over and I grabbed three of them. I'm, they were $55 turkeys. They were really nice. So I picked up three of those. We are going to be having turkey on Christmas Day too. You know, if I, you can't beat a $5 turkey. I'll make it good. And uh, But we just want you to enjoy the upcoming holidays. I think I can let them know. We're, we're thinking this will happen today. Pastor and I are leaving tonight out of LAX for a little vacation that we've not had in a while. We're going to be taking a plane ride, hopefully to some, yes, some tropical weather. Well, Honolulu, we're going. And uh, we, yeah, Uh, a lot of you know for the last six weeks I battled bronchitis, so we're hoping this will even, the moisture will help that in the lungs. Is that good, Linda? Maybe it will. I know you're a nurse, so maybe that would help. I'm hoping it will. And uh, everything else, looking forward to the rest that uh, the Lord gives us in many ways. And so we'll be back on Saturday. We'll see everybody. We'll see you Wednesday night. But uh, we're heading out tonight. We'll be back Saturday night. And we'll see you all next Sunday morning. So uh, you all have a blessed week. Pray for our safe travels. And also pray that we are rested and refreshed. We really need this. And uh, you know what? That's good in a marriage, good in a home. You need to do that every once in a while, right? And uh, pastors need to do it too. So if there's pastors watching, you need to do that for yourselves. Your congregations will thank you. And uh, so I know it's going to be a great time for us. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday. How many of you are ready for the word? I love it. Let's give our pastor a hand as he comes and brings the word. Oh, offering on ways to give. You know what? I've never been, you know, like those high-powered offering takers. This is how I always believe, and we like to give the opportunity. Givers will give. Tithers will tithe. And we just say, it's just a reminder, there it is. You know what? God works in your heart. He works in my heart. You know, reminder, if I get birthday money, I'll put myself a little note. You know, uh, make sure you tithe. I tithe on that birthday money, and I make notes for myself. 
I don't need the reminding. The Holy Spirit reminds me. But we just want to let you know the availability and the ways to do that. And if we you're just home, have to give an opportunity. There right? it is. Amen. Give you the Teaching opportunity is there. Heart to is there. give. Right. And it is more blessed to give than receive. And God Somebody loves taught on that Wednesday a night cheerful giver. Yes, it's more blessed on getting and, and mm -hmm. receiving, I think you did. You have to receive before you can give. Ooh, that's good. So Sorry the Lord has that. to give to you. So it is blessed to receive, right? Sorry, I missed All that. Right. I was at home having a, a coughing attack. Yeah, you were, <laughs> you were, you were doing your thing. Amen. But let's give uh, the Lord one more hand. Yes, today. amen. Amen. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Wow, I enjoyed teaching that lesson Wednesday night. There are givers and there are getters. Amen. A getter is not a receiver. You know what? It's, it's, it's wonderful that the Lord Jesus, Paul said, the Lord Jesus said, and we're to remember the words of Jesus, that it is more blessed to give than to receive. But he didn't say that it wasn't blessed to receive. Amen. And uh, I think that sometimes we have to learn to be gracious receiver, receivers, gracious recipients. Amen. And I'm just, uh, I just want to make sure that I... Uh, am not only blessed, but that I am a blessing. Amen? And so that's what that's all about. Anyway, I'm not going to reteach that. You can get the, well, no, you probably can't get it uh, from Wednesday night. You can, uh, you can come. I'll, I'll reteach it to you, okay, if that's what you really want. I'm going to, uh, all, all of the Christmas season, I, um, I try to, this is, you know, only one Christmas message. We do that. Traditionally, I'll be doing that um, not on the not on Christmas. Christmas will be communion service and scripture and reflection there, shorter service. But I I try to to keep with the season because it's a blessed season. Amen. It's a miraculous season, and sometimes we get caught up in other things that are traditions, which are okay, but it's not really the 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 emphasis of the season. And so uh, I'm, I'm not a pastor that, uh, thank God, and that is his blessing, that ever really has a hard time uh, with something to preach. I usually have four or five things brewing all at, at once. Uh, but there are times that, that I contemplate, do I go this direction or, or this other direction? And uh, I got up this morning, I tried to save this, so if, uh, I hope that we don't have a train wreck here. I don't think we will. But I want to read you uh, this little article that just, just, and this was not on a Christian site. It was on a, uh, on a secular news site, opinion writer. But I thought this was great, and it actually brought some confirmation to me on what the Lord had been um, asking me to preach this morning. This gentleman said, if you ask my wife, Nancy, she will tell you that being on time is one of her husband's core values. Even just hearing the word late makes me feel a sense of panic. I'm not a big fan of being late. But sometime during the Advent season, how many understand we are in the Advent season? Uh, you and I will, will uh, sing out these words, he said, late in time, behold him come offspring of the virgin womb. Apparently that's a, a hymn. He said, wait, what? Question mark. Was Jesus late? For millions of people centuries ago, impatiently anticipating the arrival of their king, they actually felt he was. Your Bible tells this story as a blank page, a piece of paper with nothing written on it. Between the Old and New Testaments, when the prophetic book of Malachi was buttoned up and the words of Matthew's gospel were yet to be. The prophetic book of Malachi was buttoned up and uh, there was a sheet of nothing on it in your Bible. Many of, apparently many of the Bible um, translate, translators and, and companies, that's the case. There's a sheet with nothing on it in your Bible. I'm serious. This empty page represents a waiting people. For 400 years, can you fathom that? 400 years. Longer than this nation has been around. 
almost twice as long. For 400 years, I'm still reading the article, a nation pacing back and forth, hoping, longing, impatient. Where is our Savior? They must have whined a million times. You and I have things written on our prayer list, requests that have not been answered, or things we wish would go away, and they don't. We're waiting. It feels like God is late. Ever felt like that? (laughs) Christmas is nothing if not a bold reminder that the Savior has come. He is here. No more waiting. It may feel like God is late. He's not. He's on time. He's listening. And he's answering in his way and in his time. The blank page in your Bible is immediately followed. It's followed by the story of Jesus. And I read that this morning and I went in and I said, honey, let me read this to you. This is so good. You would expect to find it. I didn't find it in a preaching site. It was on a news site, a secular news site. But God truly gave this individual some insight today. I want to preach to you this morning, imagine a world without Jesus. Imagine a world without Jesus. First of all, uh, I don't think by now... 2,000, a little over 2,000 years, I don't think that you and I would be around and the world would be in existence today to even imagine it if Jesus had not come to Bethlehem, a Savior, right? So let's get into the word this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Stop there a moment. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. It doesn't say that they have already perished. They are perishing. Why? Because obviously they have not received or put the value upon the preaching of the message of the cross. But to those or to us who are being saved, man, even the earth is groaning for its redemption. We are looking forward for that final redemption. Amen? We know where we're going, but that day has not come yet where it Mortality is put on immortality, and corruption has put on incorruption, right? So we're looking forward to that redemption. So in essence, we have been saved. We don't have to do anything else, but we are being saved. Sanctification is a work of grace that is taking place in us every day. But the world today is sure living up to that statement by the Apostle Paul. The preaching of the cross is becoming more foolish to those who have not believed than it has ever been before. I read an article that said it's not just Christianity that they're trying to cancel. It is many religions that are being canceled today. A few years ago, John Lennon wrote a song. It was called Imagine. And he said, imagine that there's no countries, it isn't hard to do, nothing to kill or die for, no religion to. Imagine no religion. Well, I'm not big on religion, really. I am big on salvation. I am big on, a, on an experience with Jesus Christ. But, but we know what, what is being referred to when, when they say religion. Imagine a world without any religion. I think that's what we're being asked to imagine, right? 
And maybe he didn't understand, or maybe what was stated was that one of the reasons there is no peace in the world today is because of religion. Is that, could that be what was being stated there? And, and, and in a way, it's true. <laughs> but they're not talking about real peace. If there is no religion, if there is no truth that has come, it means that you're not being bothered. You're free to do things your way and according to the dictates of your heart and your understanding. There was another critical time in history. It was during the dispensation of conscience where each man and each woman did that that was right in their own eyes. And it was a tumultuous time. It was a, it was a very difficult time so that after that time, God decides that he is going to take righteous Noah and his family, put them in an ark, and he's going to destroy the rest of this earth. We know the story, don't we? Amen? So imagine. Imagine 400 years not knowing that there was open revelation for all of these years. Now, there may have been times, there are times that the Bible says that, that an open revelation was rare. During that time, God called Samuel as a prophet and a judge of Israel. But imagine a time that for 400 years, there is no revelation. They've heard the prophecies but the prophecies have not come. I tell you, there are some, you know, people say scary things. I don't think it's scary things. I think it's very intuitive things that are going on right now. They're, they're talking about, even right now, now these may be a bunch of kooks. I believe in the, spoo- uh, the supernatural, but there's a difference between supernatural and spooky natural. How many understand what I'm talking about? And so you can get all kinds of, uh, of, of, of kooks out there. But, but still yet, even if that's the case, they are still talking it that certain rabbis in Israel say that they have met with the Messiah. Now understand, the nation of Israel did not receive Jesus as their Messiah. They rejected him. He came into his own and his own received him not. These are exciting times because as the people of God, we're seeing events and things that are stacking on top of one another that are pointing to the return of Jesus. Amen. And it's been a long time since those words were heard and were written where it says, why do you stand here gazing up into heaven for this same Jesus which is taken up from you, you see taken bodily into heaven he is coming again in like manner and he is coming to receive you unto himself now think about that we've heard the promises we know that it is factual but it's been a long time and sometimes when it's a long time we think that it's an impossibility or maybe it's an untruth but I tell you today just as they waited for 400 years but it came to pass After the blank page in your Bible, they begin to write Matthew and Luke about the birth of the Savior that had come to this earth to be the Savior of the world, the promised one. Wow, interesting, isn't it? There have been many wars that have been fought over religion, so I guess in a way that's true, right? Many people have been killed in the name of religion around this world, and most certainly that's not right, and it doesn't coincide with Jesus' teaching, but on the other hand, could you imagine a world without religion? That's what they're trying to cancel today. But truly, it's not really religion that's being canceled. It's God. It's Jesus, because Jesus said, There is no other way to the Father but by me. Right? 
So I want to encourage you for the next few moments. Try to imagine today what your life would be like. Well, I hear Christians say all the time, oh, I don't know what I would do without him. Right? I don't know how that I would ever make it through the struggles without Jesus, but imagine this world without Jesus. Imagine what life would be like if he had never came to earth. I know that we live in a world today that is very critical and more critical every single day of religion or of God. Many blame Christianity and now what I've heard today that there are those that are wanting to cancel for the Jews Hanukkah just as they're trying to cancel Christmas. I know that we live in a world where many blame Christianity or the Judeo-Christian, uh, the, the Ju- Ju- Judeo-Christian experience or its, its presence in the world for intolerance because there is a firm stand on biblical truth that is unwilling to compromise. We live in a time where truth is relative to most people. It's relative to the individual. It's relative to their raising. It's relative to their circumstance. It's relative to who they are and what they think. Never has there been a time as a pastor that I have heard more often, well, personally, these are my personal beliefs. And yet if your personal beliefs, that's wonderful. We should all have convictions and personal beliefs. But when it comes to spiritual things, they either line up to the Word of God or they're false. Now I know that there's no private interpretation and there are people that say that, they're, that, that, that they have a greater revelation than someone else on, on what the Word is. But I'm telling you, the unadulterated Word that Jesus came teaching. There is so much confusion. And I've had people say to me, but who's right? Who is right? Are the Christians right? Are the Muslims right? Are the Mormons right? Are the, are the, uh, you know, are the, the Jewish uh, people right? Who is, who is right? Because we're, we're, we're so confused. And, and you know what? Paul said to Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God. And that doesn't just ring for Timothy. It rings out for every single one of us. Not show yourself, uh, study to show yourself approved unto men. Show yourself, to show yourself approved unto God. Hallelujah. Every one of us need to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Why? Because he says a workman does not need to be ashamed. And the way that we keep from being ashamed is to study so that we might rightly divide the word of truth because there's a lot of it that's not being rightly divided today. So anyway, that's for the the view. You're intolerant. You are bigots. You are this, you are that. And there are many today, it is, it, is no, it is no falsehood that we are living in a post-Christian, post-modern, secular society. Even the direct children of the Abrahamic covenant, the promised one. Did you know that in Israel, more than 80% of its population is secular? Many of them don't even believe the promises and the stories about them. Hello? And we get all excited about it. We're Gentiles that have been grafted in, thank God. How many tracking with me so far? It's just another religious view among the world full of religions. That's the way a lot of people view it. And some try to find fault and flaws in what the Bible teaches. And... They, they do so and try to mingle. There is a movement today to try to mingle all religions together, all ideas together. We have Jesus over here 
and we're not going to forget about him. We're going to include him in with all this other new age and, and uh, cults and that sort of thing. You know, it, it, all roads lead to God. Doesn't matter what you call him, what his name is. And yet the scripture refutes that today. Hello? I could take you line upon line, precept upon precept, uh, if time would permit today, and maybe sometime I will. But it's just viewed as, a, as another view. But today, I want to tell you what life would be if Jesus never came. Is that fair? Could you imagine if the atheist philosophers, the liberals, the progressive, the Hollywood stars were given today what they want? No religion, no Jesus. I said, boy, you're going out on a limb, Pastor. Well, I've been there before. A world that Jesus never entered. Think about it. You see, a life or a world without Jesus would not bring about peace. It would not. Makes for a good song, but it wouldn't. But it would rather bring about chaos. A lot of think that, that this Christmas that we could do uh, without it. <laughs> we could do without these things. There's, there's a movement going on right now, as I said. And there are some things that we could do without. If you want to cancel something, you could cancel the busy shopping malls, as far as my opinion. Amen? Uh, there, there are some things. You could cancel the selfishness. And the materialism that's not only practiced but being taught to future generations. We could cancel that part. That's not what we're referring to today. You see, today, ladies and gentlemen, without the birth of Christ, there would be no death on the cross. There would be no resurrection there would be no ascension, no high priest at the right hand of God today without the birth of Christ. There would be no remission for my sin. There would be no hope for my future. And even for non-Christians, many somehow benefit from the fact and the season that we're celebrating is that Jesus Christ came God incarnate to the world over 2,000 years ago. Many non-Christians that don't even believe in his deity have benefited over the years from the fact that Jesus, God, came down from heaven, donned the role of humanity, came in the likeness of sinful flesh. When the time was right in God's set time, Jesus came to this earth made of a woman. In other words, it was miraculous. The virgin birth. It doesn't say he was made of man and woman. He was made of a woman, conceived of the Holy Spirit. And because of this, there are many that will never call upon the name of Jesus. They will never speak the name of Jesus except in maybe a, a, a swear word or some kind of contemptuous statement. But still yet, I am here to show you that even those today still are far better because God sent His Son into this world in the fullness of time. I want us to think about this today. Life would be totally different. Out of all the things that we could do without right now, the one thing that we can't afford to do without is Jesus. Let's, let's think about it. Let's go back to the future. How many, how many have looked over and over and over and over and over again at those Back to the Future movies? You know, what is that that he keeps saying about the, the time continuum that's, boy, that's, 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 a, that's a shaky thing. I'm so, I'm so glad that doesn't truly exist. But it's an interesting lesson. You th can't fix things by going back. Hello? Now, that should have got an amen right there and didn't. Even, even fixing a small event in the past 
could drastically change the way things could turn out in our future, right? So we don't want to mess with that. We live in a world where people are trying to remove Jesus from everything, from the courts, from the schools, from public places, from the pledge. Hello? Companies no longer allowing their employees to wish a Merry Christmas. Some have war, declared a war on him altogether. What if this was granted? Okay, let's go. What about the holidays and dates? Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving. Even Halloween. Halloween, yeah. All Hallows Eve. What about those? What if there was no A.D. and B.C.? Let's talk about America as a nation. Its laws. Do you know that our laws, even our government, the three-pronged government system came out of the book of Isaiah? The lawgiver, talking about the judicial branch. It, it just, it, it just, you can go over and over and over again because America was founded by people seeking religious freedom. So every American, not just Christian Americans, every American is better today because Jesus came. And our laws are patterned after biblical principles. Hello? And whether we are a Christian nation today, still yet there is unrefutable evidence that our forefathers Plans were for this nation to be a Christian nation. You've heard me on the holidays where I preach the God and country messages, go over those facts, and, and it's pretty irrefutable. Education, hospitals, the school systems, the universities that now are anti-God, anti-faith, right? Most of them, if not all of them, were established as Christian schools by Christians. So you remove Jesus. If Jesus had never come, you would, never, you would not have Duke University, you would not have Harvard, and you would not have Yale, just to name a few. Hello? And the same with hospitals. It's just the practical side of things. Don't fall asleep on me. It's, it's going to get better. I'll get, to, I'll get to stomping my feet or doing something to wake you up here in a minute or two. In fact, where do people go today when they're in need most of the time? To the church. To faith base. We had a young man one time that, in fact, it, it's, it's nothing... Uh, it's nothing rare to have somebody sleeping out in front of the church. But, but uh, we had a man, young man one time that his car broke down down the street. It was pouring rain. And he was having some real problems, some emotional problems, some family problems. I mean, he couldn't even talk to us without breaking down into tears. And he said, I got out of my car and I began to walk. And I was crying as I walked. And he said, but when I saw the cross on the church, he said, I knew that I would be okay. I knew that if I could find someone there that could help me, that I would be okay. The shadow of the cross has blessed many people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I've got a good illustration that I don't have time to share today, but it's good. How about more morality? Just simple morals. You know, be a good citizen. Don't, don't be a jerk. <laughs> if we didn't have any religion, the, you know, the, the Torah, the Old Testament, is what established the moral compass. 
no absolutes. Oh, really? Just want to go, but we want to be led by our feelings, our emotions. Let it go, you know? Back in the 60s, if it feels good, do it. Wow. Can you imagine? No moral compass, no absolutes. Like it or not, Jesus has impacted the world that every single human lives in today. <clears throat> no missionary sent. Hello. Hmm. But here it even gets, gets better. Life would have no meaning. Our lives would have no purpose, no point of living. There's a lot of talk in the world today about the meaning and the purpose of life. Scholars and philosophers discuss the question, and people come up with varying answers. Some say being a good person is the purpose of life. That's good, right? How many think it's great to be a good person, to be kind to your fellow man, to not hurt your neighbor, to be a good father, a good mother, a good husband, a good wife, amen? But is that the purpose of life? Some say being close to your family is the purpose of life. That's wonderful. Nobody that loves family, more dedicated to family than I am. Some say gaining more things. You know, dying with the most toys. Living a happy life. That's the most important thing. That's the purpose of life. That's the most important thing. That's wonderful. I hope and I pray that you each can be prospered. Isn't that what John said? Beloved, I would that you would prosper and be in good health. But here's the compass. Here's how you gauge that. Even as your soul prospers. Amen? Some say affecting the world in a positive way is the purpose of life. I agree with that partially. I want to leave my part of the world better than when I came. Amen? I myself personally think that all of these things are good. And some of the other things that they're talking about the meaning of life, the purpose of, the li of life, but we are still in trouble if one or together these are all of life's purposes, ladies and gentlemen. Solomon, you see, was a man who experienced, he tried all sorts of things that you and I have longed for over the years that we have spent time on this planet. And in the end, this was his conclusion in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, Verses 13 and 14, if we can go there. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Are you ready to hear the conclusion of the whole matter concerning the purpose of life? Solomon, the wisest man the world had ever known at that time, and maybe arguably even today. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. Wow. For God will bring every work, all this stuff good, but it's work. If you don't believe that, you may have not met my family. Sometimes it's work loving your family. <laughs> Uh, some, some of you are awake today. Some of the heater feels so good, you're taking a nap. But God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Now, here's the man who said, I have enjoyed everything that there is to enjoy. I've had it all. And in the conclusion of things, I have realized that it's all vanity. It's nothing. And there's nothing new under the sun. 
Have you read that? And Solomon gives us the conclusion. A Christless life is a life that is without meaning. It is a life without significance. We all know uh, here today what a life without Christ is. I'm preaching to the choir in that, in, that, uh, uh, in that reference. But you know what? We uh, understand the emptiness, but some are leading empty lives even though they say that they know that. Living empty lives and don't know it because we don't know the difference. We need a prophet or a preacher or the word to challenge us in some of this. God knows I need it. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 and 13. Let's look at that as we progress along. Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, you know what the word Gentile means? I've told you before, but I, I, I need to, to repeat it today. It means someone without a covenant. That's simply what it means. The Jews had a covenant. The Gentiles did not. And everyone who is not a Jew is a Gentile. Remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. If you be in Christ, you are Abraham's seed. I'm not saying that you're not. In fact, we have a new covenant. Jesus, when he ate the communion supper, he said, this is my blood. This is, this is the covenant. This is the new covenant. Let's read on what Paul has to say. That at the time you were without Christ, you ever remember a time when you were without Christ? It, uh, it's hard for me to remember. I was saved when I was seven, so to be without Christ. And I want to tell you, there are a lot of missteps along the way. Oh, pastor, I was raised in a Christian home. I've never been without Christ. Hmm. Then what David said about him being born in sin or into sin and shaping in iniquity is not true. But the Bible, was the Bible true? Where Paul in Romans says, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. That at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers. That proves the very point that I just said to you. That if you were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers, you were Gentile. Right? From the covenants of promise, having what? No hope. No hope. Oh, just a little bit of hope, Pastor? No. No hope, alienated from God, enemies of God, having no hope and without God, where? Without God, where? In the world. Wow. If not for Jesus, my life would be a wreck. Your life would be a wreck. If we were even still here. Life would be. Or would life would have no hope. And if it has no hope. Then it has no joy. And it has no peace. Oh be careful what you ask for. In this world. Not a Christian just for the benefits. Right? We're not. We're not. We forget not his benefits. But we didn't sign up just for the benefits. But there are benefits that we receive because of our relationship with Christ. Somebody needs to hear this today. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. 
And yet Paul says, I believe it's to the Colossian church, when you have Jesus, you have everything because he is everything. In him all the fullness of the Godhead dwells. Amen? My life, your life would be a wreck if Jesus had not come. The benefits we receive, let me talk about them because the psalmist said, <clears throat> we quote it, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his who has forgiven our sins, or I think the, the King James translation puts it something like that, who has cleansed our iniquities, has forgiven our sins and healed all of our diseases. Let's talk about the benefits today. Because you know what? Our foundation needs to be strong. There is an, indo an indoctrinational value today in what the world is propagating. If you're gaslighted long enough with a false truth, it could be that you start believing it. That's what's going on with this generation, our kids. Oh yeah, I'm going out on a limb today and for the world to see. I'm surprised they... I'm surprised they haven't already kicked us off there. Amen? There is an indoctrination. There is a gaslighting that's going on that's saying, life is not better with him, so you might as well be without him. Let's just cancel. You say, oh, that couldn't happen. Listen, kids have grown up in homes where their parents have told them they're worthless, they're good for nothing, they have no value, they may be one of the greatest inventors, the one with the most smarts and creativity in the world. They could have been prosed and purposed by God to be one of the next uh, and, uh, great inventors of the world. But you know what? You're told you're worthless, you're told you're nothing long enough, you know what? Pretty soon you'll be start beginning believing that. I've done my share of counseling in marriages over the years. And there's a brainwashing that can be going on that is as much abuse as physical abuse. Amen. And I don't want anybody that I have been given spiritual oversight of to be duped. I want you to be strong, have a foundation. I thought our youth director did a great job last Sunday, our district youth director, preaching on the foundational things. It did my heart good to hear the one that leads our young people preach about foundations. Amen? Life would have no hope, no joy, no peace. There are benefits that we receive because of our relationship with Christ. In Him we have hope. We have the hope of heaven. We have the hope of a future. We have the hope of life beyond this turmoil, life beyond the suffering, life beyond the, 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 the things that we face every day in this world. But we have a hope in him because he lives I shall live and I can face the future knowing that my Redeemer lives and when I stand before Him one day these eyes shall behold my Redeemer. That is in my future. That's in your future. That's the hope of heaven. Christ in you, the hope of glory, yes. But our future, the fact that we are not citizens here, we are foreigners, but our citizenship is in heaven, that ought to make an Egyptian mummy shout today. If we had any in the house. The hope of heaven. The joy of salvation. Living a guiltless life. Oh, I have plenty of guilt, Pastor. Well, you know what? You need to lay that at the cross. 
if you've prayed through. 1 John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of that sin. What sin? The sin that you confess, that you bring to your high priest, Jesus of Nazareth, that came into this world 2,000 years ago to bring hope and peace. What about Romans 8 and 1? Now, therefore, is no condemnation. There's a difference in conviction and condemnation. The Holy Spirit convicts, but never condemns. So peace. Oh, we don't have peace. We, you know what? Peace of heart is the best kind of peace that you can have. They said that Howard Hughes was multimillionaire even back when it was worth a lot more money than it is today. And yet he had such, a, such phobias that, that, that ruled, ruled his life. And maybe, maybe it was his fault, I don't know. But, but they say that he could not sleep at night without armed guards outside his hotel door. I remember one time we went to a car show and saw one of Howard Hughes' cars of this great collection. And there was this, the whole trunk of this old 1950-something cars. How many remember those cars, how big the trunks were? The whole trunk, it wasn't like today, we have filtration systems in our car. But the whole trunk was filled with a filtration system in his car because he was afraid that he was going to get some sort of incurable disease and spend the rest of his life impaired or sick. Had it all. Really? Didn't have peace. What about today? I don't know. Some of the we look at some of the richest people of our time and say, boy, I really wish that I had their life. Really? I look at them and think, boy, I'm really glad that I don't have their life. But peace, the joy of salvation, no guilt, the peace of knowing that this life is not all there is. At times, that's all we have to cling to. Imagine going through life without that. Paul sums it this way. He said, if I were, were somebody that had hope in this life only, I would be of all men most pitiable. You can pity me if this is all there is. I can pity you if this is all there is. We can pity the world if that's all they have. Amen? If Jesus had not entered the human form, the human frame, God incarnate. John says, in the beginning was the Word. I may preach a little of this on, on one of the other Sundays. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and we beheld His glory. It tells us that Jesus was not birthed. He is co-equal, co-existent, and co-eternal with the Father in their deity. Amen? But you get down to verse 14 of John 1, and it says, and the Word became flesh. Right there is the good part. And the Word became flesh, and we... And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Imagine going through this life without that. Yuck. Yuck. We would have nothing beyond this life. Sometimes we have no choice but to encounter certain problems, trials of life, and we think that God has abandoned. But you can only imagine how depressing it would be. Amen? Can you imagine a life where you have to go through the same situations but worse than you have today with no hope that God exists or there's anything out in the end? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine standing at the bed of a loved one and having to say goodbye? Can you imagine that without that hope? Seeing a witness and witnessing all the injustices that we see without a hope of that one day changing and there being a better place. Amen. 
when all the wrongs are being made right. Well, why doesn't God make the wrongs right now? Because the Bible says that because God is not slack concerning his promises or that God is not willing that any should perish. Let me tell you something. If God righted all the wrongs right now, there's a lot of your loved ones that would perish and mine. But you see, because God in his mercy, he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's why that we have to deal with some of the things that we're dealing with. Amen? He said, I don't want to deal with it. Then let's see. Let's, let's get in line or let's write a list of whose loved ones are going to go first that God's going to deal with. Or some of us. Think about it. Amen? Getting deep. You see, we see, we see hope, but, there, but without Jesus coming, it would be a life without hope. But we know that there are days coming when all the wrongs will be made right. Fact is, he did come. I said, fact is, he did come. His name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. His name, you shall call him Jesus because he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus, meaning Jehovah saves. He did come 2,000 years ago, over. He did rise. He did ascend to the right hand of the Father. He's going to come again in like manner for his church. That's the fact talking about facts today. I'm almost done. If it wasn't for Jesus, we would still be in sin. Romans 6, 19 through 23. Let's see if we can find that. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. Hmm. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness. Wow. Lawlessness that leads to more lawlessness. Imagine that. So now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Hmm. But now having been set free from sin. Now having been what? Set free from sin. It is your prerogative. Take it. Set free from sin. Paul says, sin no longer has dominion over you. Set free from sin. Now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God. That doesn't mean that we are, that, that word in the Greek is, is like a love set slave. It is your choice to be that slave of God. In other words, you have your fruit in what? Holiness. And the end, what? Everlasting life. One more verse. Ooh, this is the one we always quote, but we leave those out, the ones we just read, right? For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus, wow, that ought to make you feel good. Does it make you feel good to know the concept of being made free from sin? <laughs> wow! Not only would we sin because of a lack of motivation in life past, but out of no power to overcome. But because Jesus came, we now have the power to overcome sin in the flesh. If he had not come, we would have remained in sin and its consequence, which is death. Next time you hear someone imply the world would be better off without Jesus, don't forget what life would be like.
I stand today and I refute what is being propagated. Cancel church. Cancel religion. In fact, you know what? I believe that as Christians we have the truth of the word and godliness. But, but I stand and I say, no. In this country of ours, our forefathers fought and died for the freedom of religion to worship God to the dictates of your own heart. But imagine, imagine a world if Jesus had not come. I don't want to imagine. Amen. But I think a lot of people need to hear, hopefully a lot are, and a lot are recognizing, you know what? We shall behold him. Just as those that believed in faith for 400 years that there would be an open revelation and Jesus would come. It's been a long time. It's been over 2,000 years, but I'm still believing. You see, they were in the blank page. And there's going to be a blank page again. We've got him. We've got the Holy Spirit. But he is coming again in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Amen? Let's stand to our feet. Let's gather ourselves together, lifting our hands, thanking God for Emmanuel, thanking God that he came, thanking God that we don't have to go back to the bondage of sin, thanking God that we don't have to live with condemnation, Thanking God that we don't have to sin a little bit every day and have the guilt in our life every time we face the truth of a holy God. Thanking God that Emmanuel was given. Unto us a child is born. Watch this. Unto us a son is given. Given to you. Given to me. Given to the world. It's hard for me to imagine that everyone who stands to curse the name of Jesus today, who wants to, you know what, there have been tyrants from day one that have tried to wipe his name out from the face of the earth. Hard for me to imagine sometimes because I'm not God and I don't have unconditional love in some of those things. Hard for me to imagine that the son was given for them. Every single person, every idolatrous, idolatrous, adulterous person in this world that wants to cancel Jesus, you know what? Here's here's a fact: the Son was given for them, just like He was. You think that the church could pray today and ask God to reveal Himself to the world through us, and then do our best to take Jesus to the world? so that they'll know. He said, so that you and everyone that you talk to or that is around you will know that there is life in Jesus' name. You see how imperative it is that we share, that we take Jesus to the world. How many would say this morning by an uplifted hand, Pastor, I don't want to fail to take Jesus to the world. This world would be a horrible place for that. You're his presence in the world. Jesus is in heaven. You're his presence. You're the body of Christ in the world. You speak for him. You walk for him. You're his hands extended. You are Jesus in the world collectively. We are the body. I want, how many want to take him so that all the world may know that there's life in his name? Amen. Bow your heads with me today. Is there anyone under the sound of my voice or someone watching by Facebook today or on some other form of social media later will say, man, I can't imagine 
I don't want to imagine what my life's going to be if I continue to reject Jesus. You see, Jesus is the gift of God. And if you have not received him, I hate to tell you this, I'm not trying to be honoring. But if you've not received that gift, you've rejected it. Say, so oh, listen, I'm not a Christ rejecter. If you've not received the gift, you've rejected him. But you don't have to go another day. In fact, you don't have to go another moment without Jesus in your life. And so you're here today, or maybe watching, that you lift up your hand and say, boy, I'm making a decision today for me, Pastor. And I'm going to include Jesus. I'm going to invite him in my heart to stay. I'm going to serve him. Can I just see a hand? I need, I need you to lead me in prayer. Is there anyone today? All right. If you're watching my social media, write to us. Let us know. Send us a private message. Let's pray this prayer together. Father, in Jesus' name we come to you. We thank you that you came to the earth for us. You are with us today. Lord, we confess every sin before you today. And you said that you would forgive us and cleanse us. So guilt is gone. Condemnation is gone. I can have peace the Prince of Peace. Lord, help me that my light will shine around this world. That I can take Jesus to them because how pitiable they are if they don't have life beyond this life. And so Lord, help me to be a witness, to be the light Help me to be the light of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't be seated just yet. Just a quick announcement, then we're going to bless you and dismiss you. There's an announcement. Uh, Josh Cooley, are you back there doing the media? out here. I want everybody to see you. No, come on out. Josh, uh, you're in the FFA, right? You do all of that. And he's a senior in high school. And this church has helped you every Christmas for how many Christmases now? Maybe four Christmases. They do a drive for the community. He was texting me during church. Oh, my thing just went, look at this. It went completely blank, our conversation just now. Strange. That's what you get for texting during church. <laughs> oh, there we go. He was wanting to make sure while he was doing the media, he said, uh, can we also, uh, I forgot to ask earlier, can we do an official collection? Ends on the 12th for this. He's going to extend it for our church through the 19th. Uh, even in the paper, there was an article and a write-up, and they interviewed Josh about this and really cool it's a cool article uh, the portion of the newspaper says it all but we are going to be collecting items it's a food drive and the items that they have down here are canned goods essential items toothbrushes soaps clothing anything else you want to say lightly worn jackets and so we only have until you're extending it for us until sunday the 18th everyone else is the 12th right that's what I noticed on the flyer. So how many of you, the next two weeks, will gather some items, uh, the, the canned foods, the toilet, I'm seeing hands going up. If you have used, slightly used jackets, flannels, any of those, and then you do you help with the distribution or? So this is, I know it's his senior year. Well, this will be your last year because you'll be. They can't yes. hear him out there unless you. This will be this will be my last year uh, officially running this drive, and so it's very bittersweet. It's 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 almost it's like my brainchild. It's something that I took over my sophomore year, and um, have been leading it single-handedly. Uh, this this year, jumped back onto a team, onto a board, helping me 
um, do all this. And it's been a little difficult because, you know, being a lone wolf, running it for so long and then jumping back into a team. It's, we'll pray for you. It's, it's hard because I'll go, I want to do this. And I'll go do it. And they're like, hey, you needed to tell us first. And I'm like, I'm That's sorry. good. That's good teaching. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, but it'll be, we'll be distributing on the 19th there at the Wasco High School. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll have little, we're going to have little boxes and fill them with the canned goods with, with all of the other um, items that would be collected and we'll distribute them out to, to whoever Amen. needs it. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Let's give Josh a hand. I know this is kind of like you said, bittersweet. He's been very passionate in this church. It's been amazing. Thank so you, the Josh. next two weeks, bring in, start bringing on Wednesday nights, Sundays. Are we going to have a bin out there this year? You want to just uh, bring it at the entryway. Usually we put something there. Just bring we'll it we'll and we something. will figure something out. But thank you so much and blessings to you very much. All right. Thank you, Josh. That's a great, that is a great thing to do this time of year. Stretch out your hands this way. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name above every other, the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a great day. Blessings to you. Thank you.